Okay, Cortland has pulled our cam adjuster magnet out of the car, and uh, it does kind of seem like it's stuck. I'm, that pintle, I'm pretty sure, should come out and move back in. Zoom in on me here. Really doesn't want to move. Yeah, I can kind of get it to move there a little bit. I think that should. We have another vehicle here. It's an older one, a 2012 CC with a CCT letter code. Um, this one obviously is um, a later one, a 2015, but they're very, very similar. And maybe uh, that other one will work in that in place of of this one, or maybe we can at least see that, or maybe we can at least demonstrate on the video that it will uh, how free one looks. Okay. This is our cam adjustment magnet out of our 2015 Passat, and that has a CPR letter-coated engine, and you can see that thing's plastic. And this is the cam adjuster magnet out of our 2012 or maybe 2011 Volkswagen CC with a 2-liter TSI and a CCT letter code. Now, you notice this one's made out of metal, but they are almost identical. This one may even work in there. I don't know. Um, but, they, but here's the... Let's go ahead and zoom in here. Here's this one, and that pentel comes out and moves easily. On this one, you can shake it, and I'm sure on video even you can hear that it that that valve is moving in there. And on this one, you don't hear anything. So uh, this is definitely the problem. Maybe we can clean this thing up and free it up with some brake clean. Compressed air. Hang on just a second. Oh, it's right here. Blowing those holes. I hope those holes go in, in down there where the valve is. Oh, yeah, it's moving. See that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Maybe I should have tried that to begin with. I was blowing in the, the groove between the valve and the, the housing. If I blow in those holes, it just pops right out. That thing was definitely stuck. It's moving pretty good now. Oh yeah, look at it. So here's the known good one from our 2012. And here's our no freed up one now from this one. Okay, Cortland has installed this camshaft adjustment magnet after we cleaned it and got the pentel freed up. And um, as you can see now, specified is following actual almost perfectly. And I want to point out that when we first started this, uh, that both actual and specified were at zero. And it took a couple minutes of running before the camshaft actually went active. So I would uh, assume that there's there is some type of computer strategy that doesn't make the camshaft go active or make it adjust until it runs for a little while, it warms up, or maybe when it goes to open loop or something like that. Let me rev the engine and you can see what happens when I rev it. I guess we can do a quick graph, see what it looks like on the graph. Just want to make sure my scales are still the same here, and they are. And you can see the green line is following the red. And that is what I would expect. Okay, I just got back from the road test, and this is generally what it looks like on the road test. If you're accelerating, it advances the camshaft some, and a actual follows specified pretty accurately, just like it is there in the graph. So if you're making a comparison to your car, this is a known good for you.
obviously at idle it's usually at about 10 degrees and um, let's make sure no codes reoccurred now obviously this customer had some communication codes and evap codes and things like that I am definitely not guaranteeing that those codes will be fixed based on fixing the timing code uh, uh, but it was misfiring like crazy no codes reoccurred on our test drive I'm very confident that this car is fixed now once again our theory was the misfire was happening because the timing was uh, stuck due to the camshaft magnet being some incorrect position I don't know what that position is I was never able to duplicate the misfire while I was looking at the timing but we definitely had a timing problem so we're addressing it that way I'm confident it's fit that the misfire is fixed but I'm definitely not going to guarantee the evap code or the communication codes or things like that are fixed by us fixing this uh, this customer had a AC problem as well we're going to look into that AC blower on I guess I need to turn the temperature down too huh okay about one degree colder and it's going to start freezing we have received our new part and there's a the part number right there and we'll be installing it Let's... can't get it open with one hand Urgh, I'm use my knee Now we did finish up installation on the new cam adjuster magnet here. Got a dream catcher here. Okay, I called the customer and talked to them about the, the problem on this and I offered them a repair of just cleaning the cam adjuster magnet and obviously I'm not going to warranty that that's going to be a permanent repair. It could be a temporary repair. And the cost of the cam adjuster magnet was only like $70 and it was, you know, it's super easy to put on so the labor's cheap. Uh, so they elected to go ahead and change it. Obviously the original one was working really well after we cleaned it, so uh, it may have been okay, maybe not. And we did receive the new part and put it on. I didn't take any more graphs or take any more video because you already saw a good working one uh, with the cam adjuster magnet that we cleaned and uh, it was working fine. So Obviously there may have been more diagnosing that we needed to do on this, but uh, I think cleaning it as easy as that thing is to get off cleaning it and uh, blowing through it and getting it freed up checking to see if it's stuck and getting it freed up is really the way to go if you have this type of problem we could have checked power and ground and the uh, scope the ground side of the cam adjustment magnet and I want to call that thing a solenoid so bad but I do <laughs> that is what it is okay it's a solenoid why do I have to call it a cam adjuster magnet and change all my terminology when that's what a solenoid does it it's a magnetic thing that moves a pencil okay anyway moving on obviously there's more checks we could have done we could have checked power and ground at that cam adjuster magnet we could have scoped the ground side of the cam adjuster magnet in order to make sure that the computer was commanding it to move we could have put a scope on the cam sensor and compared it to the crank sensor to see if uh, um, they correlated and look at a known good pattern. Uh, we also could have jumped ground to the cam position magnet to see if it changed the scope waveform when uh, on the cam crank correlation. I mentioned that I saw Ivan from Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics diagnose and fix this same problem. I'll reference his video here up in the corner. But if you'd like to donate to the continued production of these videos, visit, visit my website at www.kansascitytdi.com. Find the donate icon. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed watching this video, here's another cool video you can watch. Or check out this one right here. And don't forget to subscribe.